So in this lecture, we're going to go ahead and talk about creating polygonal primitives and how to interact with them in the scene. Uh, we've discussed how you navigate, and we've discussed where things are located in the UI. So let's go ahead and create some geometry so that we can actually go ahead and start talking about construction and how you build things in Maya. So if I go to the Create menu, and I'll pull that out, you can see that under objects, we've got NURBS objects, which are uh, geometry based on splines and manipulating of curves. We've got polygon objects, which are uh, geometric objects, which you can manipulate vertice by vertice. We've got volume objects, which we we'll, won't even get into discussing because it's not related to this at all. But we'll go ahead and create spheres. I'll create a uh, cube, and we'll move these guys around a little bit. I'll go ahead and create uh, a, a cylinder. And you can see that uh, I'm just using the defaults when I create things. You can go in, and uh, you see there's an option box. And when I, uh, you know, options for the different geometry, so that let's say I wanted more like a pill shape, I could choose round cap and add some divisions and I'll just make it a little bit taller so that you can see if I hit apply I've got the start of sort of like a pill tic tac -y thing so uh, that is there for you if you don't hit reset on the uh, options box it will save your settings as always with Maya if you just click the X and close one of the option box. It's going to store that even when you close the program. So just reset that, and you see it goes back to the default. And uh, if, if you uh, create things and you, and you want to create a bunch of them, you can just use the G command, and G will uh, store the last action. So you can see I've, I've got now several cylinders on the screen. Um, so those are some nice shortcuts to know about. If also, if I want to, let's say I wanted to construct, I'll just delete these. Say I wanted to construct a home or a level with a bunch of rooms. I can turn on this, this option for interactive creation. And now if I go into my cube selection, See, it didn't create the cube. It actually tells me to draw the base on the grid, and then it will uh, what do what's called an extrude option, where it pulls up the rest of the cube so that I can actually place things. Now, if I hit G, I can you know, put the other rooms into the scene, and I could go ahead and sort of you know, create create a fast little uh, city or what have you of buildings. And if I turn on my back face culling and shaded here, and I need to actually have the objects as well. There you go. I'm going to remove the top faces. Back face culling, what that really is referring to is that uh, all, all, the, all the power of the render is being used to render both sides of the polygon. But in a game engine, you're only rendering one side of the polygon. So it's the the side that's not being rendered is called the back faces. So if I look at this on its own, you can see that when I remove the top face and I look inside, it looks like it's got no backing to it at all. The single sides of the polygon are only rendering when I'm outside of the outside of the box. So. Um, when, it, when you're in Maya, just keep that in mind that, you know, if you've got a complicated structure to where you're going to see through to the other side, let's say it's like 
for our project, we're going to have like a windshield. So if we were doing a convertible, that windshield would need to have geometry on both sides. Let's say that, you know, this is the windshield. What we'd have to do is make you know, a duplicate and then reverse the, f the normals. And now you can see that we've got a fully uh, re renderable object from whichever direction we're looking at. And I know that because this little shortcut doohickey up here is the normal reverse. Uh, option so that's just a very quick rudimentary explanation of uh, back faces you can look more up in the Maya help if you're wanting to learn more but okay so we have this object I'll turn back faces off or calling off there we go and we will uh, I'll press X to snap it to the center. And now we have an object that we're can, we can mess around with a little bit. Um, if you want to view the object in wireframe, you can select four. And now you can see the object is wireframe. We don't know just by looking at this view that this object has no faces on the top. Um, but I do know if I switch to component mode that the faces that are on the object are rendering as red and blue here. So if I go back to object mode and I put on, I select five, I can go back into shaded mode and I can view the object uh, the normal way with materials on it. Uh, there is some other options here. I could go into the shading menu and I could put on wireframe on shaded, which shows me these blue outlines in addition to the shaded material. If I put on x-ray, it actually dims the transparency of the shaded material so that I can see through it. And that is useful as well, especially when you start rigging and working with adding joints inside of geometry. Um, there are other things in here. I could do smooth wireframe. I could do in the lighting menu. I could do use no lights or I could do use all lights. If I have a light in the scene in the create menu there's options for lights. I could put a directional light in you can see when I rotate the directional light, it's affecting my geometry. I'll just pull that up so you can actually see what a directional light looks like. So it has, directional light has these arrows that are pointing in whichever direction your light's meaning to bounce from. So the shortcut for that would be seven. That's the use all lights. And if I have a light in the scene and I select six, now it just shows me uh, the object without lighting. So if I delete this, nothing changes in the shading. Well, that's a quick and dirty run through and explanation of how the shading works. Um, one other thing I want to talk about also is pivot points. So when you create objects, uh, there is a default pivot point at the center of the object. Now, if I take this object and I duplicate it and then I combine it, uh, you'll see that the pivot point now is returned to the origin. It's forced to the origin. So whichever side I select, even though you know there are two objects I am selecting, it's a single object with a center pivot in the scene origin. Now I can move the pivot. So I could I could move the pivot basically manually by selecting D and grabbing one of my manipulator handles here in the move direction. Um, you can move it manually. You can move it according to grid line intersections by holding on X. 
that's snapped to grid. Or I could actually move it, so for whatever reason, to points on the object so that, let's say for whatever reason, that's my desired pivot point. If I hit D, now my pivot point is around that corner vertice. So if I hit rotate, go into rotate mode, let's see, looks like I duplicated twice, but you can see now that everything is rotating kind of on that one point. So that is the D uh, translate pivot point uh, shortcut. And the undo key comes in handy. Let's go all the way back. And we have the combined. I could either keep on doing until I separated the objects, or I could use my shortcut for separate, uh, which is also buried under mesh right there and combine separate. So if I do the separate command, you can see that. Now I select objects that are unique. However, you may notice that the pivot point remains the center of the uh, scene. So to restore the object to their, the pivot point to their object center, I would go into my modify center pivot on each object. And you can now see that we can rotate around, rotate the object, and it rotates around its object center. So that's how that works. In the next scene, we're going to go ahead and jump into component mode and talk about each of the individual components. So I'll see you in the next video.